My name is Nico Serpinetti. Today, I'll be going over the first lab, Physics 2211, constant velocity. So to introduce this lab, the purpose of it is to observe the motion of some object that is moving at a constant speed without changing direction. So this means there's no change in sign or magnitude, but that is a constant velocity. We want to compare the movement of this particular object on the table, which counts as the experimental model, the computational model created by the um, physical environment simulation growth grip. And some of the assumptions we're making is that there's no air resistance, there's no friction between the rolling object and the table. In the normal force, that perpendicular table, we want that to be equal to the gravitation force, so that's going to be a flat surface. So we're only observing displacement along the x-axis, not the y or z. And fundamental background principles behind this lab are Newton's first law and Newton's second law. The Newton's first law, as applies to this lab, is that an object that is, is, that is already in motion will continue to in motion in a straight line. Um, unless it's acted upon by a net external force. And even second law states that the rate of change of momentum on the body over time is directly proportional to source supply. And this um accounts to the fact that net force is equal to mass times acceleration. And from the second law we can actually derive two um um formulas as you can see here, the position update formula and velocity update formulas. And both these formulas basically allow us to look into the future and predict the position and velocity of the rolling object as time goes on. So the setup of the experiment is that we'll have a rolling object um such as a tape, which I showed here, and that'll count as a system. And we'll also have surroundings, and if that's that, that counts as anything external to the system. So friction, gravity, any other external forces, the applied force that I might in the beginning, all that or count, um, go into the surroundings. And wherever the tape starts, that'll be um, counted as position zero, and that's where we want the tape to start. So the initial condition of the position um, of the tape is zero meters. And of course, glow tape is used for computational trials, and another formula here is that whenever there's zero or constant acceleration, we can actually use this very simple formula to calculate velocity average, and that's that we take the sum of the final initial velocities and divide it by two. And these free body diagrams basically represent what exactly we want here. So at the um, bottom image shows that if force is greater than friction, applied force greater than friction, there will be enough force, and that means there will be an acceleration, which leads to increasing velocity, which is what we do not want. We want to model the fact that the friction and applied force cancel each other out, we have force zero, no acceleration. We want the object then we'll move to a constant velocity. And this is the tracker model video. So as I roll object to the right, as you can see, an upward sloping graph of position versus time is formed. And I chose the right axis to be the positive expression. So because of that, because I rolled the object to the right, there will be an upward sloping graph formed. If I roll to the left, it will be a downward sloping graph. And another thing to note that is um it looks like the graph is pretty linear in shape, meaning we did um relatively we did a good job in achieving velocity, even though it's not perfect. Some of the data from track analysis, one of the most um, we use 30 frames, frames per second, and we kind of approximate the initial position to be zero 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 just to make calculation simpler. And calculating the initial velocity using the velocity average formula as mentioned before, that'll get us to 0. 0.25 meters per second. That's the average velocity. And this is the initial condition of the computation model on growth script. As you can see, 0. 0.525 is initial velocity. Um, I changed the mass of the ball to reflect um, with the page to reflect what it actually is, but of course this is not affecting cal calculations. And the calculation loop, um, we use a position to form the velocity of um, the formula in these lines right here. And we also make sure to set f net equal to a vector of zero 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 just to make sure that we don't want we want zero net force to model um, a um, constant velocity. So those are the changes that we kind of made there. And um, comparing the two graphs, um, the, the red is a computational model graph, position versus time in the tape, and blue is the tracker model. And they start off very similar at the beginning, but over time, the computational model starts to diverge and kind of overestimates the position of the draw. And the reason why the computational model looks a little bit more linear in shape than the tracker model over time is the fact that the computational model um, will basically enforce constant velocity at all time. But the realistic tracker model, there are other forces in play that cause an F force to not be zero and that causes a kind of plateau as the ball slows that the as the tape slows down. That's the difference between these two graphs. And discussion follow-up. So if I were to flip the axes, um, uh, my graph would now become downward sloped as the ball would move moving right. And then if we flip the axes, the plus x direction is now designated the left. So because of the opposite effect, um, my graph would now become downward. But this would mean the sign of velocity would be negative, position becomes more and more negative. But my results would not change because the magnitude of position and therefore the magnitude of velocity is still the same. And we can't necessarily um, pinpoint exactly how many pushes and pulls are at play here um, to give zero net force because I'm I a human am pushing it um, the rolling tape across the table in hopes of achieving constant velocity. But in, re in reality, there's no way of preventing the tape from accelerating due to external forces such as friction 
between the surface and tape. Um, this is unlike the computation model because it can achieve constant velocity, but they're all in the real world. There's always um, forces that place such friction that'll kind of decelerate the um, object, and we cannot um, not exactly pinpoint that. And some source of error, as I mentioned, the human error of me rolling the tape too hard, leading to variable velocity instead of constant. For the first time using GlowScript and factors, so there could be some programming errors, some wrong calibration errors. Of course, there's some trying forces such as table to rough friction will play a bigger role than on smooth pure ball.